Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for watching Young's Daughter's Funeral Home and Bereavement Center uh, uh, channel here. And so I have Trish um, Alger with us today, and she is our lead craft care specialist with Help Heal Veterans in Temple. And we're so excited to have her today because our bereavement center is expanding, and we're trying to reach out and find local resources to help bring more classes in. And so she is a mixed media artist. She is also an art historian and she is the wife to Bob of 38 years. And together they have four grown daughters and a grandmother to 10 amazing grandchildren. Um, so uh, Trish, tell me a little bit more. Anything else you'd like to share about yourself before we get started? Um, trying to think. Well, I have been called uh, a little intense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little passionate about everything that I do or I'm interested in. Uh, I'm a big talker, but I always say I'm also big on action. So I may talk a lot, but I get a lot done. <laughs> and so how long have you lived in the Central Texas area? So I've lived here uh, just over seven years. Uh, moved here from many decades in Arizona. So went from the desert to uh, a climate I actually really enjoy believe it or not I wasn't sure how I was going to do with some humidity but I love this place this place is amazing me too me too and so um you're a veteran organization so what is your your uh, favorite part of working with the veterans yeah so it's hard to pinpoint just one um but I think it's when you see a transformation in someone's life that you don't expect, uh, like a healing moment. I have so many great stories that I've uh, witnessed with my own eyes and, and heard uh, from veterans who have used our craft kits. I mean, it, you think of something as uh, simple as a craft kit, something arts and craftsy, and then you see it turn somebody's life around. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we've had everything from one veteran who uh, came up to us in an event and he actually, said uh, he'd been using our craft kits for several years. And uh, one of the craft kits we have is uh, a set of wagons. There's five different wagons you can put together all out of wood, they're laser cut. And they're very challenging because you have to do every spoke on every wheel. And so it's one of those things that we wait, we, you should wait as you work through our craft kits to maybe try it. But he picked it up like pretty close to the beginning uh, when he started. Um, Anyways, he said he used them to uh, do everything from uh, research. He would take our uh, stagecoach and go online and find out what the Wells Fargo wagon looked like. He would paint it according to detail. Uh, his wife even uh, suggested he create some kind of luggage for on top. So he took blocks and pieces of leather. Uh, he created a scabbard and a rifle. I mean, all of this, it took him months to do everything. He did that with pretty much every one of our craft kits we had or any of our wagons that we had. Uh, and he told me one time in one of those events, he said, you know, this, these crafts have kept me sober for over seven years. He said, I get up in the middle of the night and instead of drinking, I will go straight to one of these and I'll start working on them. And so that does something to you to realize that something as uh, simple as a craft kit can, can be such a, a drive for change in someone's life. That's amazing. Absolutely. So I, I, I agree 100%. So uh, as, as many know, I'm, all, I'm a veteran and there's plenty of times where um, you look for these opportunities that it could be as something major or something as simple as a craft kit that can really get you out of your elements or wrap your brain around something other than the chaos that we have sometimes, right? That's um, so That's let's find out a little bit more about you. What, what is your favorite color and what is your favorite craft kit that you've ever seen? Ooh, I like that. Uh, I say my, my favorite color. So my favorite color is green. And the reason it's green seriously is because there is no end to the amount of green out there. I mean, there's so many different shades. Uh, being a mixed media artist, that's uh, color is a big part of art. And uh, I like options. That's just how I'm wired. <laughs> like give me options on anything, whether it's food or music, whatever it is, but color definitely Definitely the, the color green for sure. Uh, let's see, one of my favorite craft kits. Wow, we have about 125 different types 
And so there's so many to choose from. I know it's pretty cool. I mean, everything from leather and wood and fabric and painting kits, uh, paracord, all different kinds. Let's see, my favorite craft kit. Um, okay, so this is a really silly one in some ways, just because I don't think anyone else would choose it to be their favorite. But um, we have a craft kit that is called the uh, playing card case. And so you can take a deck of cards and put it inside of it. And then it's got a flap that goes over it and kind of tucks in. Um, I'm sure when it was originally created way back when leather was starting these things, uh, I'm sure it was for cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now that that's, uh, that's kind of gone the way, <laughs> that has gone away, no one's really smoking much anymore. Um, so instead it's a playing card case, but I like it. And there's just something about the structure of it because there's uh, very few pieces and there's this gusset that goes all the way around and you're stitching all of it together. And I think the reason I liked it is I learned a different stitch when I started doing that craft kit. Um, so it comes some, it used to come with plastic lacing and which some people do not like because it'll, it'll turn on you and it hurts your hands after a while. But I liked the way it looked when you did this double stitch on the outside of it. It was just the neatest looking little box, a little case to hold things in. So I know that's kind of <laughs> silly, but no, I love it. Your enthusiasm is so contagious. Your smile, everything. I can feel your energy and your love right love through it. here. So that's so exciting. Um, let's see. How did you come about Heal Vets? How did you start with them? That's the, so that's a really interesting question. I would say that God tricked me into this job because <laughs> here's how I was, um, we'd been here um, not even two years and I was, came to Texas because we were looking for more small town feel and I wanted to finish my degree at UT Austin, which there, there was something else that was going to happen. That didn't happen. There was no place to rent anywhere near Austin for me to go. And, uh, and we actually found a place in Temple and even more so than that house was the fact that I liked the people. I mean, they were genuine, they had integrity, uh, kept their word. That was, that was a big deal for me. And uh, so anyways, I, I met some people in, through my small group at church. And, and one of them, a friend of mine, she, uh, she knew I was going to school full-time online because I was going to go, I even applied Baylor and even I got accepted with a scholar small scholarship it was still gonna be so expensive with that this is crazy I can't do this I'm like well and that was going to be the fine arts part so I said you know let me do the art history online so uh I went online to see which one which school had the best online for art history and it was my college back in Arizona that I was already ready to go to school for so I thought that was funny um, so anyways, I'm taking them full time and she's this friend of mine sent me a, a text message and she said, I know you're not looking for a full time job, but I read this in the paper and this just sounds like you. And I read it and I go, man, that does sound like me. That was crazy. So uh, I just, I guess on a whim, I put in my application. I really didn't know if I had a chance or anything. I wasn't sure exactly what it was about. Uh, I hadn't even heard about Heal Vets until uh, that happened. And I went online and checked it out. And then I was really intrigued because I just love what they do. Um, anyways, I went in for uh, an interview a few weeks later, best interview I've ever had. It was over an hour long and it was so good. Uh, by the time I left, I was like, wow, okay. Anyways, here's the tricky part. So I'm thinking I'm just, I'm going to work there. No big deal. And uh, the national advisor had flown in from out of town. Down and she did the interview, her and the manager at the time. And uh, she calls me later that night, offered me the job. And, and I'm like, and she's like, well, you know, you sound stunned. And I'm like, well, I knew we had a good interview, but I didn't know who else you were going to interview, you know, and somebody else could be better. So anyways, I came in the next day and filling out the paperwork. And I hear the manager, Dan, talking about how uh, he was retiring. And I go, wait, wait, you're retiring. And she goes, Trish, you're getting his job. Whoa, I wouldn't have gone for management. I wasn't planning that one. That was tricky. <laughs> I was like, so uh, it's been interesting. That's when you've never really sought management. I mean, I've been in charge of teams and stuff. That's totally different. But being in charge of a, an entire location uh, was not what I was looking for. But I'm telling you, I've grown a lot in this job. Um, and well, I don't know, I can't imagine not doing it. You can see the in syncness. 
You can see the love <laughs> through and through. And when you can wake up every day and know that you're doing something well and profound is what you're doing, hats off to you, sister. I think you're doing a great job. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So what sense. if our national partners work with Heal Vets? I mean, I know I say I'm not a national partner yet, but I mean, I'm just so blessed that our paths have crossed. So I'm interested to know what other national partners work with Heal Vets. Ah, I love that. Uh, so yeah, of course, I love our, our partnership. I love local partnerships because I think that's uh, that's where it really is going to come together because vets live here, right? Our vets live here. Uh, but the way the national partners get to have uh, a, just a small hand in what we do is through materials. So we take materials that would otherwise end up in the landfill, goes to our headquarters in California and gets turned into craft kits. So airline they send their seat their air seats to us we tear them down we take the leather we turn them into wallets we turn them into a football kit um let's see we've got uh lazy boy they sent over 400 pallets of material to our headquarters still working through all of that that's a lot of material but that has made uh, many many kits everything from our messenger bag our purses uh we've come up with a lot of new kits it's a uh, chip back there. He's, he's amazing. He creates uh, most of our extra kits on a, on his free time. That's his therapy. He loves to create things. And then we have Elks. The Elks club actually sends us leather. Uh, they get deer carcasses from hunters in the Midwest. They have it treated and then they send the leather to us. And that's our moccasins and uh, our leather gloves for uh, wheelchair gloves. There's uh, oh, you name it. There's all different types of things, our drawstring bag, things wow. like that. But yeah, isn't that great? I just, I love the fact that those items that wouldn't, you know, probably covered in dirt someplace and probably take forever to break down, uh, now instead gets to turn into a kit that can help heal someone else. I just love it. Wow. That is amazing. Um, Wow, you know, it, it small things like that can mean the world to most people, and it and it's showing. So, where what would you like to accomplish by the next year from here now? I mean, what what do you like to see either in your organization or personally? What are your hopes? Wow, that those are good questions too, and that really makes me think. So, I'm one of those who love to have. I love to write down goals at the end of the year for the next year, that kind of stuff. Revisit the ones I wrote. I may not have even looked at at them through the entire year, but I like looking back and seeing where I'm at on all of it. Um, and I guess, uh, well, let's see, uh, for vet, for heel vets, for us, our location, um, I'd like to see us uh, not only thriving, but finding new avenues in the community to not only reach out to veterans and to the community to be a part of uh, helping their veterans and supporting them. Uh, but I would really just uh, love to see uh, an understanding of what we do. So it's really interesting. We don't do a lot of advertising. Occasionally you'll see a commercial of ours in I think the clean area we've been having one reason recently, but that's not normally what we do. Usually our mouth and through other organizations, but um, you pretty much where you go, to people who have never even heard about you, never even knew what you did. And so I would love for our community to really know and understand and to be able to find more veterans that we could serve. I would just love that uh, so very much. Um, let's see, for me personally, goodness, that's crazy. So I'm done with school for a while. I don't think I want to pursue another degree. I haven't made up my mind yet. I may change it later, but I'm like, it's kind of nice not having homework. <laughs> yeah. So I'm good with that. Um, but the, I guess I would like to, uh, build a body of work in my art. I've been, uh, really playing more than anything else and trying different things, experimenting. And I think I've got to a point now where I want to really hone in on some ideas and create a body of work. So, uh, I, that's going to keep me busy for a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially if you can find that art niche and bring it through the, the bereavement center, we get so many people that want to do arts and crafts that don't know how to take, you know, make shadow boxes for veterans per se, um, you know, the medallions and, and all of these things. There, there's so much that the families, you walk back into a home and you're left with all of this stuff. And so it would be nice to see um, in the future, maybe there would be an opportunity for the children to take grandma's 
things and turn them into blankets or t-shirts for the children or you know shirts for the for the children that passed away into bears i mean all that kind of stuff is really needed there's not really a genuine like a generalized place for those things and so we are definitely trying to bring that to the uh to the uh, bereavement center and so a lot of people don't know that we're pet friendly um not just service animals not just all the different labels of animals that that are out there service dogs and, and grief therapy dogs but you know we love dogs my dog her, she's her name is Jaslyn and she's like 230 pounds. She's a cane corso, but she's the sweetest of the thing. And then my husband got this little tiny shorty. And so sometimes she runs around the funeral home after she gets her haircuts and so forth. So um, I, I know you're a dog lover. And so tell me a little bit about your dog and his name. Okay, so Chief is a golden doodle and uh, he's only two years old. I actually got him, my, my husband kept wanting me to have a dog. He's on the road a lot. So he He's like, I really would like you to have a dog. And I said, well, if I'm going to get a dog, I want one I'm actually going to take to work. I want one that the vets could pet because they all have service dogs. I'm like, I want one that's not working. And uh, so my daughter, one of my daughters in Arizona actually has a golden doodle herself. And so they found us one and she had trained him for a couple of months. And then so I got him right when the shutdown happened. And so wow. it was just perfect time. I know we we got to know each other really well and then uh, had a great trainer. So. Uh, uh, chief and he's more he's more standard poodle than he is golden retriever so he's pretty tall <laughs> dog but I tell you I've had dogs over the years but this dog he's special I mean seriously he's the only dog I've ever let sleep on my bed <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, he's such a sweetheart I mean I bring him to work if I don't bring him to work I hear about it where's chief how come I don't see chief my husband's navy can you tell it had to be chief yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he loves going that's his favorite thing he loves to go in there and see what everybody's doing so yeah i just love what you're doing about that too that's a that's a niche that really needs to be taken care of i love that yeah Thank you. well in all of our funeral plans um when you, when what loved one makes a pre-need right or they begin to pre-plan they never talk about what's going to happen with their pets and so what's really nice about our policies is once you buy one for yourself your children and your grandchildren and even great grandchildren up to 10 other additional people are covered under one policy and that also includes your pet. So your pets can be either cremated or buried with the same certificate as long as one of you in your family have a policy with us and that no none of my other uh, funeral homes in the area offer that service for pets. I mean, and I think that's a that uh, it's very needed in our community because I love my pets and I would be, yes. you know, hor horrified if something happened to them. So, um, yeah. you know, I know that I've seen you all throughout the community, but where is your office actually located? Okay, so uh, the the great thing about the shutdown for us, so I know no no one usually says that. <laughs> A great thing that happened. Our air conditioning went out at our location that used to be across from Temple College, and so we had to move. And so we're still on Fifth Street. If anyone's ever seen it before, uh, we're just farther down, closer to downtown temple around the corner from feed my sheep and salvation army but we're at 819 south fifth street and we're in one of those brownstone houses we had the the whole downstairs floor uh it's stripped to what we had last time in fact if anything bathroom we have it's almost like a big living room that we do crafts in and everything i even have a couple little you know lights in there uh, that room uh, is the size of our location. <laughs> so I always think wow. that's amazing. How did, how did we do that? How did we do everything in there? Uh, but yeah, it's really awesome. So yeah, you can, it's uh, Avenue I and Fifth Street and uh, come park in our parking lot and then come on the side entrance and you can see uh, everything we've got going on there. We display our craft kits that we have. We have some displayed that have been put together. And then you can see the other things that we offer. So that's the thing that's really neat about us. There's uh, right now uh, for Heal Vets, there's two locations that actually are facilities. So the one here in Temple, Texas, then we have another one outside Chicago. Uh, we have craft care specialists all over the United States, but what's nice is that they can come in and they can take classes. So we have a schedule of events every month. Uh, we just we just finished a drawing class with a teacher. She's uh, not only an art therapist and 
uh, teaches art online. She's an art historian. She's got a lot of other background that she has, but she did this really great meditative uh, drawing class, a two-part one, and I uh, had two veterans that just, they said they didn't even think they could ever do art again, but she managed them to a place where they could just, all the stuff in their mind was able to just go back and then they could really be free to just draw. So it was pretty cool to see that. Next month, we're going to do some more leather. Uh, Tammy works with me as well, and, and she's a leather worker. So she's always got some great leather tooling classes. So yeah, you can come see what else we got going on. It's a lot. Well, I am so <laughs> excited for you, sister. I love your energy again. I love having this opportunity to highlight um, exactly who you are. And um, of course, being a partner, I'm a huge advocate for veterans around here. Um, many people know that I'm a service officer at the VFW post. And so whatever the vets need, I will typically go way out of the way to figure out how to get it to them. It's a, a sometimes a little out of my hat, but I will put on another to try to figure it out for them. So I can't tell you how much this means to me. And I know it means a lot to the followers to get educated because that's one thing I pride our, our business model on is education. We want our consumers to be the most educated people, um, making sure that they know who's got their back when it comes to moments, right? Um, so again, Trish, I want to thank you so much for, for taking this time and I, I look forward to our classes coming up pretty soon. So we do have two classes scheduled. Do you want to talk about those before we get off the line? Sure. Uh, so the first one we're going to do next Tuesday, uh, the 26th, I believe. And uh, we're going to use what's called our stash box. Uh, it's a small box about the size of a, a music box, a uh, cute little feet on it. And then we're going to turn it into uh, like a little memorial box that you can go ahead and put small mementos in. Uh, maybe write some items as well and put them inside of there. And then I believe the next one for May, we're going to use our journal that we have. We have this awesome journal kit. Uh, it actually stitches up like a wallet would. It's uh, made from leather from Lazy Boy, which is kind of cool, or vinyl. I don't leather, could be either one. Anyways, it stitches up. It's really nice. It's small, like a pocket journal type. And so I think we can work on maybe writing some gratitudes and some other stories and memories. That's one of the things I always loved about my grandmother. She used to write a lot and she used to write stories about her family. And uh, I received her writings when she passed away. So I love to look at those and see the stories of the family that she's not here to tell me about anymore, but uh, I can read it in her handwriting. So I just think that's really great. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to this. This can be fun. Yes. Well, a big round of applause for you, sister, because you are definitely uh, sparkling in my eyes. And I, I, I want to hats off to you and your, and your business and the group here. And I truly look forward to more uh, classes in the future. And like I said, thank you so much for, for being here with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. Bye, YouTubes. <laughs>